And joining me for today's headlines is our very own Desi Lydic. What's going on, Desi? Hey. How are you doing? So good to see you again. Good to see you. I'm good. I'm good. Everything's good. I'm just, um, you know, getting ready for the holiday. Halloween. Halloween. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of, I don't know, I'm like dreading it this year, you know? Oh. I just feel like there are going to be so many people dressed up as Karens. It's like my culture is not a costume. Listen, if I see one Karen costume, I'm calling the cops. F*** around and find out. Where's my camera? F*** around and find out. Huh. Anyway, do you celebrate Halloween? Um, no, no. Where I'm from, generally, like, witches and goblins were things that would get you killed. So you would try not to be that. Yeah. Let's go with that. Let's go with your way. Let's just be done with it. Let's be done with Halloween. Okay. Anyway, I'm super happy to be here. Yeah, no, I'm, <laughs> I'm glad to have you here. And let's, let's do it. Let's kick things off with the big news in Congress. The only place with more infighting than an episode of Succession. After months of whittling down the bill to satisfy Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema, today, President Biden finally revealed what's left of his big social policy bill. And a lot of what was originally there is now gone. Like, free community college is out. And so is paid family and medical leave. Which means America will remain the only nation in the world where women try to give birth during their lunch break. USA! 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 Oh, and Medicare won't cover the costs of dental or vision care for seniors, but it will cover hearing, which makes sense. You know, Biden made sure that that stayed in. I mean, when you've got a president who whispers as much as he does, you've got to make sure that people can at least hear him. Plus, if you have hearing, you don't need vision. You know, people can be like, hey, look out, duck, and you'll be fine. But there's still a lot left in the bill that Democrats want, right? Things like universal pre-K, uh, an extension of the child tax credit, and half a trillion dollars to fight climate change. And today, President Biden went on TV to tell America why it needs this bill. And man, he did not sugarcoat the situation. 30 years ago, we ranked number seven among the advanced economies in the world as a share of women working. You know where we are today? We rank 23rd. We used to lead the world in educational achievement. Now the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development ranks America 35th. Our infrastructure used to be rated the best in the world. Today, we rank 13th in the world. We can't be competitive in the 21st century global economy if we continue this slide. Damn, Joe Biden is scolding the nation. But I, I do understand what Biden is saying. America in the past used to be great, and it should be made to be that way again. Huh. Someone should put that on a hat. And the sad thing, the sad thing is that Biden wanted a much bigger bill to address all these problems, but the bill that he's trying to sell now is much smaller than that. You know, it's like a doctor telling you, in order to cure your cancer, I want to cut the entire tumor out. And then when you wake up from surgery, he's like, so all I could do was rub a little Vicks on it, and I hope that helps. Dr. Manchin wouldn't let me use the scalpel. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and by the way, who ranks infrastructure? Like, I've always wondered this. Because you realize there's a world ranking of countries by infrastructure, but who is that person? Who ranks? Is this like a guy who goes from country to country rating bridges? This is a guy who's running around, and he's like, that bridge is trash! Yo, that bridge is great. Yo, that bridge is really great. Yo, I'd f that bridge. She. I've always kind of been attracted to a covered bridge, you know? It's like, what are you hiding under there, Mr. Bridge? It's like so much mystery. You've thought of that, right? No, I, I genuinely have never thought... Don't I've tell never me you haven't bridge. thought of that. I've You've never thought of, thought of a bridge once. being sexy, ever. Like one time. Never. A little bit. Maybe the Brooklyn Bridge. Yeah, right? I'd f*** that bridge, too. I said attractive, and you took it to the next level. Okay, all right, fine, I took it too far. The thing that I can't get past is the fact that they want to drop this whole paid family leave thing. Like, I am trying to get paid to leave my family. It's really messed up, especially no. now. Like, this whole holiday season, it's so stressful. Have you ever tried to shop for a Halloween costume for your kid? No, it's I... like a war zone in those stores. I had a lady pry a costume right out of my hands just because it was still on her kid. Very competitive situation. Look, huh. I got to create a magical holiday for my kid, you know? You got to do what you got to do. It's a really painful, sad story. Well, I don't know why you had to make it so sad. 
I apologize. It was baby. perfectly appropriate the way I said it. Yeah, I, I have a tendency to bring things down. All right, well, well, this will bring us up. Let's move on to our next story. It's about gender. You know, how you know what section of a clothing store to look around in before you buy it later online. More and more people are accepting that gender is fluid and that people can have different gender identities aside from male and female. Right? There are gender-neutral pronouns, gender-neutral bathrooms, gender-neutral gender reveal parties, which is the most progressive way to waste your friend's time. And now, gender neutrality is coming to your most important government documents. A milestone in recognizing the rights of people who do not identify as male or female. The U.S. Department of State has issued its first ever gender neutral passport using the letter X in place of M or F to indicate gender identity. The State Department also announced there will no longer be a requirement to provide medical certification of a person's gender if it does not match the one listed on other identification documents. They say they plan to offer the gender neutral passports more broadly next year. Okay. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, people. This is, this is unfair. Why do I have to be stuck with a boring ass letter like M when other people can get X now? Like X is by far the coolest letter. X-Men, X-rated movies, Malcolm X, the X factor, huh? It means there's something special about you. But the M factor sounds like the North Korean translation of the matrix that's translated back into English. I mean, for real, though, it's great. It's great for, like, people who are gender neutral, but, like, I, I don't even understand why gender needs to be listed on passports in the first place. You're letting a person into a country, not a nightclub. So the customs dude is not gonna be stopping you at the border like, hold up, hold up, buddy. It's a real sausage fest in there right now. Hold on, hold on. I need a few ladies to come on in. Come on, ma'am, come on in. And I know some people are gonna say, this is a security risk, Trevor. The gender on a passport helps you confirm a person's identity. Let me tell you something. Passports are already terrible at confirming somebody's identity because passports last for 10 years. No one looks the same in their photos after 10 years. I mean, black people do, but not like the rest of you. Y'all age like bananas. <laughs> and hey, I'm, I'm glad they're updating anything on the passports. Like, I mean, it's the 21st century. I can pay for stuff by waving my phone over a chip. But when I travel, I still gotta carry around a little book that they make me put a stamp in. I feel like I should be boarding a steamship to my vacation. It's an arduous journey, but a better life awaits us in Cancun. It's gonna be really hard for us. It's a long journey flying on United Airlines. <laughs> but my father took this trip and he never made it. And this could be a new life for us in a new place that has unlimited margaritas. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Why they still use the passport? It's a good accent. That's really good. Thank you. It's Thank you very, very much. Yeah, I think in a previous life, I was a British person who was leaving to come to America. I believe that. Yeah. That's I believe like my, that. That's like my vibe, you I know? get that vibe from you. Yeah. Do you, like, the passport, I mean, you know? I love using my passport. I love it. Sometimes when I want to feel fancy, I just like taking my passport to places that I know are going to card me. Like yeah, the, it really, it really. Like your actual, wait, 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 your actual yeah. passport, you go around with it? Yeah, yeah. Just, you know, like when I want to feel a little extra fancy about something. Wow. Yeah, it really makes Buffalo Wild Wings feel like I'm not going to throw up there in four hours. <laughs> not from the alcohol, from the food. I once had a trick-or-treater throw up in my house. And this, this is why I'm not passing out candy this year. I'm just gonna take a basket and fill it up with everything that I wanna get rid of in my house. Old batteries, clamshell packaging, chargers, those tiny little hangers that come with socks. Just get rid of all of it. It's like a twofer because then word gets out and then the kids don't show up and you can finally get a good night's sleep. And also you get to clean out your apartment. But the joy of Halloween is, is like the treat, no? Huh. It's, it's, I mean, it's an effective system. I've never Would thought of leave? using children to clean out my apartment that way. Yeah, it's very which, effective. Which trick-or-treater threw up in your apartment? Like, who were they? Legally, I'm not allowed to say. It might be a relative. You live an interesting life, Desi Lydic. Thank you. All right, well, now that we all have our passports, let's head to the airport for our next story. And uh, if you've ever thought that you were stuck at the airport for a long time, you have got nothing on this guy. He was arrested after living in Chicago's O'Hare Airport 
for three months. Yeah, he was just crashing in the boarding area until police finally noticed something was wrong. And honestly, I think we give the TSA a hard time for racial profiling, but I have to applaud them this time. I mean, this guy was hanging around the airport for three months, and the TSA was like, whoa, 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 let's not jump to any conclusions. Good for them. And that was the right call, too, because now a judge has ruled that this man didn't break any laws, and also, he had a pretty good reason for not wanting to board his plane. The man was supposed to fly home from Los Angeles to India, but he says because of COVID, he was too scared to fly internationally. A judge has now acquitted him of felony trespassing. Yeah, the dude slept in an airport for three months because he was that scared of getting COVID on a plane, which sounds ridiculous now, but guys, you remember what it was like back in 2020, right? We all went a little overboard back in the day. Like when COVID was still new, everyone was panicking. I mean, for a few months, I was so scared of COVID, I wasn't even washing my hands. The only thing I don't understand is how he was able to afford living in the airport for three months. Have you seen airport prices? Like a flaccid turkey wrap costs 20 bucks. For what this guy probably spent on food, he could have just bought his own private jet. I will say though, this story could have only happened at a nice airport like O'Hare. Yeah, if this guy had been at LaGuardia 20 minutes in, he would have been like, please get me on the plane. I'll take my chances with the virus. I'll take my chances with the virus. Have you ever been stuck in an airport? Oh my God, I spent way too much time in an airport. I know, right? Um, I feel like I'm constantly in airports. It's kind of like that guy's living in that Tom Hanks movie, Terminal. Yes. Right? Yeah. But I guess if you're gonna live in a Tom Hanks movie, that's the movie you wanna live in, because you definitely don't wanna be like stranded on an island or fighting in World War II, you know, or that movie Philadelphia, where he had to live in Philadelphia. <laughs> Tragic. No one should have to go through that. No one. I think I'm gonna do what this guy did, and I'm just gonna live in an airport for the entire holiday season. Just avoid the whole mischief night thing. You know, like toilet papering houses. Yeah. Egging windows. I, I have you. to do that to all the kids' houses in the neighborhood. It's exhausting. You do that? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a preemptive strike. But it's okay, I do my own house too, so that way they don't know that I'm the one doing it. Well, I mean, at least you're being considerate. Right? Yeah. Big picture. Yeah, well, well thank you so much for, for joining me, Desi, and uh, have a happy Halloween. Ah. Yeah, I, I, I hope you enjoy it, and I, I hope, did you end up getting the outfit for your kid? <sighs> yeah, but, um... Do you hear sirens? Yeah. That's just Times Square. No, no, Desi, no. Desi, it's just Times Square. Desi! Desi! They don't arrest white women. Oh, man. She didn't need to run.